Well, I think adjusting tactics, getting personnel right has been a big theme this season because we're currently top of the league. We've got a massive points gap. We've only lost one game all season in the league. And today, we've got a chance to go through to a third Carabao Cup final in a row by playing Tottenham Hotspur. I know I said they come out for the FA Cup, but... The loss in the final of the Carabao Cup last season still rankles with me. So we're going to try and get to another final today. And then we're just going to play a random Champions League game against Leipzig. Because why the devil not? How you doing everybody and welcome to part 21 of the Aston Villa save here on Football Manager 2024. I'm Stu, thank you for joining me in today's video where as I mentioned it's the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final against Tottenham Hotspur and then the Champions League game against Leipzig. And if you're excited to see how we get on in both of these games don't forget to leave a big like on the video for me and don't forget to subscribe because... Why not? Why wouldn't you? Um, I, I messed up my usual script that I do there, but I'm just going to go with it. I should probably re-record it. I'm just not going to. Since you were last with us, we've had a good run. A really good run. Um, I think the last time that we came back was around these two games here. Handy little draw against Manchester City. We beat Young Boys as well. Since then, we've lost two games. One in the Champions League against Real Madrid. One against Brighton. Every other game has been a win. I haven't even dropped points at any point with a draw. It's been wins aplenty. Now, there's been the occasional struggle where we've had games like that one where it's only a 1-0. We've had a number of those, in fact. We've had a couple of 2-1s as well. But we've actually gotten better with our defence and we've got some more clean sheets on the board. Maybe not as many recently, but we have got a few there. Include, I mean, it's it's got to the point where we've now got the best goal scored and the best goals conceded. Remember before, it was really all about the goals we were putting in the back of the net rather than the ones we were keeping out. So that's led to us having a 12-point gap, I think that is. Yeah, 12 points. However, Man United do have a game in hand. So in theory, it's probably more like a 9-point gap. But still, at halfway point, that's pretty good going. Um, in terms of transfers, we have actually done a little bit of business. We're halfway through January at this point. Um, and the business that we've done... Well, let's talk about the business out of the club first. I mean, try and stop yourself from having a look. I mean, I think my big face is going to cover a few things. But um, we've we've sold Matty Cash. And the reason why we've sold Matty Cash is we've had a fiddle with the formation. I think I mentioned maybe going back to a 4-2-3-1, but keeping the ticket tacker keeping the inverted fullback. Matty Cash didn't really fit in with keeping the inverted fullback. So we've sold him. We've sold him to West Ham United. Um, I mean, Aston Villa in real life brought him in for 14 million. We've sold him for 32. We've made a profit on him, and I'm quite happy with that. Um, did us a, a wonderful number of things, but we just got to the point where we needed to say goodbye. We then let go of John McGinn because he just wasn't getting into the team. He didn't play any minutes for us, I don't think, this season. If he did, it was very few. Sorry. He played one cup game, one league game, um, didn't play in Europe. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we brought him in in real life, Villa, for three and a half million. We sold him for twenty-two and a half million profit, um, and then we have let Thomas Lamar go as well. Um, I mean, this one not as much profit. However, twelve and a half million pounds is what we bought him for. Sold him for twenty. I mean, that's about. I, I can't be mad at that. I really can't be mad at that. He only appeared four times for us this season. It's clear he wasn't at the right level for us anymore. Um, I mean, Atletico Madrid spent sixty-two million on him back in the day. Yikes. Um, they're the big ones. Um, and, well, there's one transfer over here that you can't see. It's a loan of use for Makoko. Now, I will say when I loaned him, his ability was showing as two and a half star. However, my experience with Dortmund in my Dortmund rebuild, which hopefully has come out by now, um, has shown me that actually that is a bit of an outlier. He can still score goals even with two stars of current ability. He's got some good stats for it. Just his decisions let him down a little bit. So we've brought him in. The reason why we brought him in is a very simple one. Eliwahi is out. Well, that's a bit less dramatic than he was. Two months, basically, from when he had the injury. So we've brought um, Magoko in as cover. Uh, pardon me one second. Apologies. I've still got this really annoying cough. Um, yeah, we've um, we've had to bring him in because of that, basically. So he's coming basically as another striker. We've still got Ali Watkins. Leo Messi, at the moment, is playing as a deep line forward because, I mean, 
these three are kind of set in stone. But that that front three of midfielders really needs to stay there. And Messi kind of will take the place of Gonzalez every now and then when Gonzalez needs a bit of a rest. But it gets Messi in the team in what is officially his final season in professional football. Where's that professional football? Professional, what we know as football, not the American one. So, yeah, we've ended up having to do that. I've just realised, Lu- oh no, Lunin is meant to be in goal. So, yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, Messi, it has to be said, he's not what he once was. And in the league, apparently, he's been dross. But overall, I have really enjoyed using him. He just has that little bit of magic that just gets us out of trouble when we need it to kind of happen basically um and i'm very happy with his contribution so far this season Grealish has been good ramsey's been good gray has been excellent he's won a young player of the um month for like the fourth time this season um or the third time this season he's won three out of the five of them there you go three out of the five of them i mean that is sensational he has been absolutely sensational but there's one other reward that he's won as well let me just go back to his page he is the European Golden Boy. Same award won by Gavi, Jude Bellingham, apparently no one in 2022. Pedri, Haaland, Joe Felix, De Ligt, Mbappe, Renato Sanchez when he was still good. Martial when he was still potentially good. Raheem Sterling, Pogba, Isco, Gertz, Balotelli, Pato, Anderson, Shaw, Aguero, Fabregas. And Lionel Messi back in the day. Rooney, Van der Vaart. The list does not go on. So... That is a good sign for the future. Hopefully that will get him a sodding England cap because he still doesn't have one. Not that I'm bitter. But that's the squad we've ended up with. Now, even though we've lost McGinn and Lamar and an injury to Wahi, we've actually not replaced um, any of the players because A, squad of players we've got can kind of cover everything. Fabio Vieira, I'd forgotten existed. So he's ended up actually coming into the frame doing quite well. Uh, Matty Cash's position is being covered beautifully by Christopher Ayer because he can actually play as a centre-back and a right-back. That makes sense for him to be an inverted fullback in my eyes. So, he's been great cover for Ben White. Um, Centre-backs is still Gomez, Torres, Pecho and Biol. And Biol's got five goals this season, which is ridiculous. Uh, Torres has got nine. So, set piece is doing really, really well there. Um, Ericsson has actually moved from attacking midfield to the backup deep line playmaker because Douglas Louise is now the, the backup defensive midfielder for Bubakar Kamara and has actually done really well there so far. Um, we've gone back to this kind of formation but the tactics are very much the same or very similar to what we had in the 4-3-3 um this with these two here leaves Miranda being able to roam up and down and it really has been effective as you can see in the fixtures and these three do a really good job defensively Costa has been brilliant he's the world goalkeeper of the year by the way um and Lunin is in goal because it's the Carabao Cup and it would be unfair of him not to play I actually think he missed the semi-final first leg because I forgot anyway moving swiftly on this is the 11 we're going to be using to hopefully get past Tottenham and get through to a final. Fingers crossed. It is Lunin in goal. Ben White, Gomez, Torres and Miranda. Don't know why I used Ben White's full name. Douglas Luiz and Gray in the middle of the midfield with Gonzalez, Ramsey and Grealish supporting Lionel Messi up front. Did Ramsey, Grealish and Nico Gonzalez think that they would be supporting a 38-39 year old Lionel Messi in his final season of football chasing a trophy I don't think they did I don't think they did, we need to give a squad number to use for Makoko, let's give I'm not giving him the number 7, let's give him number 16, sure, why not right, apparently Lionel Messi's hurt I don't know why, that doesn't bode well, I probably should have started uh, Ollie Watkins if I'm being honest, because Ollie Watkins is I'm not going to say Lionel Messi is not a natural striker. Of course he is. But Ali Watkins has played striker for us more this season. So it would be a bit daft. Also, Karnasechi starting for uh, for Tottenham Hotspur, our former backup goalkeeper. So it's a battle of the number twos today. Let's see what happens. By the way, I should have mentioned 2-1 win for us in the first leg, which was the home leg. This is the away leg. That doesn't bode well for me. A, I don't like having the home leg first. Um, but if it is, I like to pump the opposition and pump them. We did not. Um, so we're probably leaving ourselves a little bit open today. I mean, I had a look through the um, the stats for all of the English creative players in the Premier League. Obviously, there's other creative players outside the Premier League. I'm still blown away Archie Gray has not had a call-up. He's surely, being European golden boy, has got to get a call-up this season. And we nearly did a training ground goal from that free kick. That was nearly sensational. Right, corner. It's messy to take. And hopefully... Power Torres? No, not Power Torres. Right, Luis heads it down to Gray. 
Great. Into Pau Torres again. Pau Torres doesn't really do anything to highlight ends. I can tell I haven't spoke all day because all of a sudden now I'm talking, the cough has come back. The cough has been relatively controllable throughout the day, but it's because I've not been talking much because I'm in the house on my own. So, um... Not ideal, obviously. Um, it's going to come back when I'm recording, but them's the breaks. Right, Messi with another corner. Looking for Pau Torres, and Pau Torres makes it 3-1 on aggregates. 1-0 on the night. And in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, we lead in the Carabao Cup semi-final by a goal to nil. It, it, I've just thought, is it is it in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? It is, isn't it? Because it's a two-legged tie. It's Wembley that has the semi-final at Wembley. So we're on our way to Wembley. I nearly balls that up by saying... We're on the way to Wembley and thinking, oh no, we're already at Wembley. We're not, we're down the road from it. Um, but we lead and that's the main thing. And again, possession, we're better than them. Passing completion, we're better than them. XG, we're better than them. Shots, um, both in total and on target, we're better than them. And match momentum, we have been better than them in this half as well. Now, we have been a bit complacent in second halves with match momentum. I'm hoping that doesn't happen today. So I'm hoping we can just fire the boys up and get them to continue. Right, I'm going to say that one. Let's continue in the second half. And let's just have a chat with a couple of players. Leo Messi's actually got a yellow card, so let's chill him out a bit. Jacob Ramsey's not had a good performance. Um, and neither really is Joe Gomez, so we'll have a word with him. And then everyone else who's not on the green, we'll just have a quick chat with them and just tell them you weren't bad, but keep going. Right. Second half, let's do this. Let's get another goal just to settle it down. Remember, Spurs will need to score twice in order to level things up. They will need to win this game 2-1 or by one goal in order to get this to extra time and or penalties. Is it extra time and or penalties or is it just straight to penalties? I actually can't remember. I genuinely can't remember what happens in this. Well, it would be a mystery. We hope, hopefully we don't find out. Hopefully we just win. But if we don't, well, we'll find out. Um, big corner in from Spurs. It is headed a little bit out, but Lunin ends up making the save, which is lovely to see. I feel like I'm trying to remember. Is Lunin the goalkeeper we had? At, I feel like Lunin's the first goalkeeper we had at Southampton. Or is the first one we signed when we got to Southampton in the My Career series um, last season. Greedy just picked up a knock, which is a bit annoying. Um, and Because I, I feel like we signed him. We were started off okay and then ended up being dross. So far, Messi scored a second. Uh, it might be offside. Right. The flag is not up on the um, on the near side. Couldn't think of the words then. Um, so that might play into our favour. It does. It is 2-0. And I think we're going to Wembley. Right. Before I do anything else. I mean, let's watch the goal again. Lovely pass from Miranda to Grealish. who's picking up a knock. I want to take him off is the reason why I paused then. But Grealish actually gets the assist into Messi. Jack Grealish must be pinching himself thinking that he is assisting a Leo Messi goal. That is utter nonsense. Right. Um, Jack Grealish is coming off. And we'll bring... Uh, the problem is I want to bring off Ramsey as well. And both of them get covered by Fabio Vieira, which is a bit of a problem. But I could bring Christian Eriksen on, even though I do play more as Archie Gray's backup now. I could do that. Or I could move Messi, move Gonzalez. Oh, that's too much. I was thinking a way to get Makoko on. I could still try and get Makoko. Do you know, do you know what? I am going to get Makoko on. Sod it. Right. Gonzalez is going to go out onto the left-hand side. Grealish is going to go where Messi normally plays, which is over here as an advanced playmaker. Yes, two playmakers, but actually Messi does quite well there. Um, and Jack Grealish is going to come off for Makoko. And we're going to give Makoko some fun time as a advanced forward. I don't know why that was showing him as four-star potential there on a position that was such a ridiculousness. And then we can bring on... Fabio Vieira, who, again, I forgot he existed. And turns out, he's actually been pretty decent for us since he's come into the team. So let's give them some decent football. Again, with two goals up, 4-1 on aggregate. Spurs have to do a lot to get back into this game. I'm not making a sub because I think it's game over. I'm making a sub because I think we can afford to take those players off. But we still have a good squad on to help us out if we need it. I don't know if that amount of waffle makes sense. I don't know whether it's believable, but... That's what I'm going with. Right. Spurs have the ball in this highlight. Madison now looking to get it forward to Ramazani. Don't know who this is, but Ramazani chipping it. Looking for Kulazewski. Can't find him. Right. It's led to Willock. Kulazewski. Kulazewski hits it. What a goal that is from Dejan Kulazewski. What a strike that is. Fair play to him. I'm going to demand more from the boys. A bit disappointed from a defensive point of view. We should have made life a little bit more difficult for him. But you know what? Credit where it's due. What a goal that is. It's a corner. God, imagine if they batter us in this game. Imagine if they batter us like 3-2 or 4-2. Oh, it might be happening. Oh, my word. Lunin is so lucky there. Oh, McCoke. Oh, 
Coco's injured. He's just he's just come on. He's just signed for us and he's just come on. Right, well, Ollie Watkins is on. <sighs> I'm annoyed at that. Right, Fabio Vieira's had a shocking time, so we're gonna move things around again. I am bringing Ericsson on as the attacking midfielder. Vieira can go out to the left. Oh, that's frustrating. Right, well, I've got one sub left. I've got another stoppage as well. We'll just have to go with it. We'll just have to go with it. It's the university's way of showing that I should have just brought on Ollie Watkins. And it smited Bubakar Kamara. Not Bubakar Kamara. Where did that come from? Yusuf and Makoko. It's because I think their names have got the same amount of syllables. Bubakar Kamara, Yusuf and Mukoko. Yeah, same amount of syllables. That's that literally. It sounds stupid. And it shouldn't have any effect on why that name came into my head. But it <laughs> it's obviously the first thing that came into my head. So, Right, it's in. Kulisevsky's there and he makes it 2-2. And we are capitulating a little bit. Although, it might be offside. I'm going to berate the boys in a minute just to try and give them a bit of a kick at the backside. Because we're getting very dangerously close to them being able to equalise here. Yeah, it's been given. I didn't think it wouldn't be, to be honest with you. Right. Berate. And I'm going to go attacking. Let's try and put them on the front foot because they've taken over. Again, what did I say? When we dominate in the first half, there are some games against bigger teams where we just let them dominate in the second half. And that's what we've done. All they need is one goal and there's a highlight. Oh, there's one more highlight. Oh, I don't like this. Right, Udogi. He's relatively unchallenged at this point. I mean... Oh, my God. Oh, there's an offside in there anyway. Oh! Right. We make it through. We make it through. We don't lose. We make it through. But my word. That was not good enough in the slightest. The way we played in the first half, we should have bodied them. But again, second half, we, we took our eye off the ball a little bit. And we let them back in. And we made it a little bit more stressful. Four to seven weeks. The backup striker we signed is out for the same amount of time, more or less, minus three weeks, as the striker who he's replaced. Never rains, but it pours. Well, I mean, to be fair, if we're going to go with Messi, I mean, Grealish is injured as well. Three to, three to four weeks. Right, well... Well then, that prioritises what we need to do. We do have a little bit of money. <laughs> got more than I thought, actually. We've got enough to actually buy someone decent if we wanted to. I wasn't going to. I was actually going to leave this money here. However, the one thing we do lack at the moment is a proper cover for Jack Grealish. Now, the reason for that is Omar Kedda was going to be the guy to do that. But he's out for four weeks, so we might as well sign someone. Like a proper replacement um, who can come in and do Jack Grealish's job when Jack Grealish is tired or in need of rest so i'm gonna go and do that i'm gonna try and remind myself that we've actually just got through to a you know the final of the carabao cup which will be over here which will obviously be in the next episode and then we'll come back for the leipzig game after i've hopefully spanked brentford again hopefully Bit of a scrappy 1-0 will against Brentford, but 1-0 we did win. A, a missed penalty from Lionel Messi did look like it was going to ruin everything for us. I mean, our attack did nothing to help us in this game, but our defence, oh my word, they put a shift in. But we did win and we did get the clean sheet, so they're the main things that happened. Also, transfer-wise, we do have our new winger. It's going to be Pedro Gonçalves. He can cover attacking midfield as well. He can also do emergency cover at striker if we need him to. Um, he'll come in and cover us for the end uh, until the end of the save, until the end of the season. Um, unfortunately, his work permit isn't for another couple of days in universe, so won't be coming in until then. But he will be coming in for the total of 45 million up front, 55 in total, uh, more than enough uh, in the kitty to afford all of this. Um, and then we have got another sale currently in process, which is um, Muscara Muscardo, um, who I did sign a while ago. Never got a loan deal. Um, on the go for him, but I've just given up and I've just sold him for ten million pounds. I mean, we signed him for I can't remember how much it was. We're breaking half a million pound loss on him. The main reason we're selling him is because there's no point to keep him, and it just gives us a little bit more money in here just to cover everything. Anyway, on to the game in hand, and this is the eleven. 
that I mean is this the 11 that we're going to be using I think it probably is um, I mean this front line didn't do many favors for itself but other than Lionel Messi we don't have many other really good options the only thing I'm thinking is maybe we move Gonzalez to the right left we bring Messi on and we have Messi start and then we start with Fabio Vieira on the bench as an option it's the only thing I can think to do. The only other thing I want to do. Bear me one second while I just check one thing. Okay, I wanted to put a particular youngster on, but he's injured, which is Richard George. Um, so I've put Amari Kellyman. He's only one and a half stars of ability, but he's he's a finisher like at this level. So well, at that level, I should say, not at Champions League level, but at least he's another forward option should we need it. So this is going to be the eleven that we are going to use. For the following game against Leipzig. It is Costa in goal. White, Gomez, Pecha and Miranda in defence. Louise and Gray in the middle. With Messi, Ramsey and Gonzalez. Supporting Watkins up front. Let's get into it. And let's see whether we can get a good result. Okay. So I did have to pause then. Because I had another whole walk up. I'm getting really fed up of having a cough now. Uh, I actually think. I've had a cold. I've got rid of the cold. But had the residual cough left over. And while I've still had that cough. I've ended up with another cold, which has extended the cough, which is really annoying me at the moment. Um, my work is working in um, a theatre box office. I won't say which one, but it, it's in a, a box office for a pretty big theatre in the UK. And I have to tell you, you have to talk all day with that job. And it's not very good when talking makes you want to cough. It's really not that good when talking makes you want to cough. What's lovely, though, is Leipzig have decided they want to give us a penalty. That's very nice. However, we did see that Messi does have a habit of missing them. I say habit. He scored a few for us as well. But he did miss one in the last game. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm assuming it's going to be Messi to take um, as he's on the pitch. He looks quite short. So it is Messi. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Lionel Messi. One of the best players in the world. Can't take a sudden penalty, apparently. Let's just, um, let's just, penalty taking 16, finishing 17, composure 16. I mean, there's no reason for him to really not be scoring that, really, but, all right, cool, fine. Right, Miranda with the ball, gets it to Gray, Archie Gray now, looking to do everything himself here, and nearly did. If that had gone top bins, oh my word, what a player, what a player. I really hope in the next couple of international breaks he gets an England call up. Because he has been sensational for us ever since we signed him. Bearing in mind, he was only ever signed to be a young backup player to come in and cover for Tillemans. He ended up forcing Tillemans, not even out of the team, out the club because of how well he played. So, it would be criminal for him not to end up... Oh, if Messi had scored that. It would be criminal for him not to end up with an international call-up. But, football manager does football manager things. Um... We've dominated that first half, um, but, I mean, not really firing so far, if I'm honest with you. I mean, I don't know what the actual Champions League um, table looks like, so I would have to go back and have a look at it. I'm not going to do it in mid-game, because crazy things can happen if you do that mid-game. <coughs> but I know we're doing pretty well, so... I mean, maybe this is one of those games where everyone switched off because nothing's really at stake. Right, Watkins is coming off. I gave him a chance. He's not taking it. Gonzalez is going back to his natural position. And Fabio Vieira is coming on. Uh, Benjamin White's not had a good one, so Christopher Iyer is going to come on as well. And then we'll just see whether that can spark things up. I am also going to make a couple of tactical changes. We're going to work the ball into the box. And we're going to go attacking because we've been all over them in that first half. I'd quite like to think we can continue to do that. Right, you two. Go and change the game for us. Fabio Vieira's nervous. Gonna encourage him and hopefully that'll spark him into life. Or not. It's also or not. Um started off the second half well momentum wise. Uh but there you go. Red Bull Leipzig. I mean, to be fair, they are good enough to get chances against us. More than good enough. And Christopher Ayer, who's come on as a sub, has gone and just kind of I don't know, just kind of gone, this is how you do it, boys. And that is much appreciated, and it is 1-0. Again, I don't really think there's an awful lot riding. I've just thought we can look at the table. I don't think there's an awful lot riding on this. We're currently second. We're pretty much through. We're pretty much through. I've got one game left after this, so I think we are, in fact, through. Lovely play there from Jacob Ramsey and Lionel Messi, which is still ridiculous to say. It's a poor finish from Jacob Ramsey. They really should have held it up and waited for Messi to get back into the box or, indeed, someone else. 
but good movement to see. I mean, Messi's definitely recovered from that early setback with the penalty miss, which is very nice to see. Um, I have skipped past all of the substitute windows that I normally do, so let's make a few just to, just to freshen things up a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring on Christian Eriksen as an attacking midfielder. I mean, you know, it's fine. He can do the job. And I'm going to bring Xhaka Biel on as well. I do have one more change left, should I decide I want to do it. I'm looking at Archie Gray. The problem is Archie Gray would normally be covered for Christian by Christian Eriksen. I mean, I could do that. I could do that. And I could bring on... Apparently, I could bring on Bubakar Kamara. I don't think so. I'm going to bring on Amari Kellyman. Because why not? I, this is pretty one of those games that doesn't really matter. So let's just do it and let's just have a bit of fun with it, shall we? Sure. Sue me. I'm giving the youngsters a chance. The match momentum, other than that little blip of blue that's just appeared as I was talking, is was a thing of beauty. But we are still maintaining dominance over them. Right, Nico to Ericsson. Ericsson back to Ayer, who really shouldn't be up there as a right back. I thought Kellyman was going to get a goal then. Right, Pecho heads down. Whoa, absolutely thumps it, but he's really unlucky that no one was able to kind of get on the end of it and put it in the back of the net. I think this is just going to be another 1-0, but the performance was a good one. So I'm quite content with that. That's a lovely match momentum slide. Only a little bit of blue on there, and that is the game. 1-0. And I'm pretty sure we're qualified now for the main part of the Champions League. I mean, we've got to be, surely. There's only one game left, and I'm fairly confident. Well, yeah, it's mathematically impossible. We're qualified for the knockout stages and not even the, the playoff bit. We're past the, that bit. We are through to the round 16. There is confirmation. Happy, happy days. Right, well, that's lovely. And then we've got a transfer that's on the way as well. So, let's have a look at when we'll be back. Manchester United in the Carabao Cup final. We're going to come out for that. And we'll maybe try and tie it in with the Champions League round of 16. If not, we'll play a Premier League game or something. I don't know, but we'll definitely come out for the Carabao Cup final. That might even be a video on its own. And then I'll do another video as well. One or the other. I mean, that is literally... Three games of Manchester loveliness right there. So, we'll see what happens. But we'll definitely come back for that and see if we can win. Just a quick reminder of how the Premier League table looks. It looks splendid. We're top. We've only lost one game. Man United have only lost two, to be fair to them. But it's the draws that have really helped us out. The lack of draws. Goals scored. We haven't got one striker. Elia Wahi was getting there after his injury at the start of the season. But another injury has kind of cut him off. Jacob Ramsey's actually the next one on there for us. The goals very much have been spread around the squad this season. Archie Gray is not in and around the uh, best player. He has been the best player of the league for a bit. He's dropped down a little bit now, but he's still there. As is Ramsey, Wahi, Gonzalez, Torres. A bunch of our boys, which is nice to see. Jack Grealish and Jacob Ramsey leading the assist chart, which is lovely. Miranda is on here as well. And then, in terms of clean sheets, one for Diogo Costa away for an Aaron Ramsdale, who, despite his team being in fifth, is doing a better job than his teammates, it has to be said. Um, and, again, FA Cup, we didn't really talk about. We did go through in the FA Cup first round against Charlton, and we've got Crystal Palace in the next round. I was originally going to come back for that game today, but then I thought, sod it, actually, let's come back for the Carabao Cup, because that's the one we didn't win last season. That feels like everything's going very, very well, minus... DM injuries to two major first team players and two of their cover players, which is necessitating the transfer, bringing in Pedro Gonzalez. But that's going to do it for today. So until the next video, thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to leave a big like on the video for me and don't forget to subscribe. It is completely free to do so and you'll make me a very happy chap. I've been Stu, you guys have been awesome and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.